My name is Robin and I work for the RSPB, the Royal Society Protection of Birds. We are a nature conservation charity that helps protect nature for people and wildlife to enjoy. Today I'll be delivering you a session called Habitats at Home. We are going to be looking at the habitats around the inner forest. Your learning outcome for today is learning about the local habitats and what animals are present. To begin with, we will explain what a habitat is. Then we'll go on a virtual journey to discover the inner four different types of habitats and the animals that we would find there. We'll map these habitats on a map. And then you'll do an activity with your class and teacher on creating sensory boxes of different types of habitats that we've just learned about. And you'll act out how you would walk through each one. Then to finish, I will set you an RSPB WOW challenge to complete outdoors. This will help count towards earning your RSPB WOW challenge badge. But first, Makaton. Makaton uses our words, symbols and signs and gives extra visual clues to help with general understanding and basic communication. The word we're going to learn today is home. We can see the symbol, which is the picture of a home, and together we're going to learn the sign. What we want to do is take your two hands and make them into a triangle, but your fingers don't quite touch, maybe just below your chin. And then as we say the word home, we will want to bring our two hands down and out like this. For example, home. Home. Can you do that along with me? Put our hands into the triangle and bring them down as we say home. Good job. Now, every time throughout the session that I say home, I want you to do the sign along with me. But let's begin. What is a habitat? A habitat is an animal's home. It is a place where a collection of plants and animals live a place where plants and animals can get their food and shelter to help them survive. A habitat can be from an entire ocean to just a tiny lily pad or from the entire rainforest to a tiny leaf. Different animals that live in habitats that suit them and so they may not suit other places. For example, camel does really well in the desert because of its long lashes that stop the sand getting into its eyes and they have a thin coat that keeps them cool. This is called adaption. Camels are adapted to the desert. Or, for example, a polar bear has a thick coat to keep it cosy and it's white so it's hidden and camouflaged in the snow. Polar bears are adapted to their Antarctic area. A polar bear is not adapted to the desert. It would be far too hot and a camel is not adapted to the snow. It would be far too cold. Can you think of anywhere you've seen animals live around you? What type of plants are animals and why are they there? Animals look for food, shelter, water and space to survive. As we see with the camel and the polar bear, each animal has different requirements, so different habitats are homes suit different animals better. Okay, 
So who's ready to go on an adventure around the inner fourth and look at the, some of the larger habitats at different animals' homes? Are you ready? Let's get our shoes on and our backpacks that's got all of our essentials in it and maybe even an explorer's hat. Let's go. But first, let's have a look at the map of the Inner Fourth to find out whereabouts we're going to be going because we can never go on an adventure without having a map. So we have this blue area, which is the River Fourth, the green area, which is the land around it, a North Arrow, which tells us the direction we are facing. So this way is facing north. This red line that squiggles around is the border of the inner fourth. So everything inside this boundary counts as the inner fourth. It runs from Blackness all the way up to Stirling. We have other towns in between, such as Alloa, King Carden, Grangemouth, and Bowness. Have you ever heard of any of these towns? What is the name of the town where your school is? Wow, so here we are at our first local habitat. Does anybody know what this is? It's a grassland. For example, you can find grasslands at Crossford. Grasslands are wide expanses of land filled with low-lying plants such as grasses and wildflowers. Has anybody ever been here? How was it? What animals did you see? Can we find any just now? Let's have a closer look. We can get a skylark, a brown hare, a lapwing, another type of bird, a bumblebee, which loves the wildflowers and is really important as a pollinator, a peacock butterfly. Did you know that peacock butterflies have these special markings that look like eyes to predators when they look down on it. This scares them off and protects the butterfly from getting eaten. A Scottish thistle, which is a flower of Scotland. Dandelion. And an elephant moth. What beautiful colours it has. But where are we going to go next? Wow, so here we are in our second habitat. Does anybody know what this is? It's a woodland. For example, at Valleyfield. Has anybody ever been here before? How was it? Woodlands is a habitat where trees are the dominant plant form. This means that trees are the most common plant that you'll find there. This, there might be different types of trees such as Scotch pine, alder, ash, rowan, but there's also different types of plants and things that you can find such as fly agaric. This is a type of fungi that you'll find on the woodland floor. What else can we see in a woodland? Oak is a very common type of tree. A woodpecker, if you're out and you listen carefully, you might be able to hear them pecking away at a tree. A roe deer, you need to be very quiet not to scare them if you see one. Bluebells, a robin, holly, Pine Martin. Wow, wasn't that woodland habitat magical? This looks very different. 
Does anybody know what type of habitat this is? Industrial. For example, Long Gannet. Has anybody ever been here before? How was it? An industrial landscape is really important for our cultural heritage in the Inner Forth because humans shaped the Inner Forth over the past 400 years with industry such as mining and ironworks and ports and power stations and factories. So this is really important for our cultural heritage to know where we came from. I wonder, does anybody know what animals you would find here? You might see a peregrine, which would sit up high, or a common tern that comes back every year as a, it's a migratory bird. Have a look out next time you go past one of the industrial sites and see if you can see any of these birds. A lot less animals found here though than in the other place, wasn't there? Here we are at our next habitat. Can anyone guess what this is? It's a wetland. For example, RSPB Black Devon Wetlands Nature Reserve in Alloa. Has anybody ever been here before? How was it? Wetlands are areas where water covers the soil or is there just near the surface all year round. But sometimes in the winter where there's a lot more rain, it's a lot more wet and in summertime it's just a little bit squidgy. Wetlands has both aquatic and terrestrial animals and species. This means they have plants and animals that can live in the water and plants and animals that can live in the land. The water can be fresh, salt or brackish. Brackish means a mixture between fresh water and salt water together. And you can find lots of different plant species such as grasses, bulrushes, which are the ones that you might see in ponds that are really tall with a little brown top that looks like a lollipop or reeds, sea arrow grass. Let's have a look and see what we can see. A tadpole. And of course, after a tadpole comes a common frog. A kingfisher, which is a beautiful coloured bird. A mayfly. A common blue damselfly. Wow, has anybody ever seen one of those? A pink footed goose. You can tell because it's got pink legs. An otter. And a mute spawn. This is a sea arrow grass that I was telling you about. Aren't those colours and patterns amazing? Nature is just incredible of what it can create. And this Aloha Black Devon Wetlands is home to so many different types of plants and animals. Where are we going to go next in our journey? Let's find out. What habitat is this? This is a moorland, such as up in the Oakle Hills. Has anyone ever been here before? How was it? If you've been up the Oakle Hills, did you see the amazing view all across the Inner Forth Valley? But what is a moorland? A moorland, also known as a peatland sometimes, are usually found upland and often quite wet habitats and really like squidgy soil. So what grows there is usually low 
growing shrubs, grasses, bogs and mosses. And it might not look like much, but it's a really important habitat for many um, homes for different plants and animals. Let's see what we can find there. We have some moss, a seven spotted um, ladybird. Did you know that the seven spotted ladybird is the most common type of ladybird found in the UK? A rind leaf sundew, cotton grass, which you can tell it's cotton grass because it looks like little cotton balls on the top of it blowing in the wind there. A common hawker dragonfly. Wow, isn't that a cool insect? And we've got a large heat butterfly. And some Scottish heather. This usually gives like a purple hue when you look at the landscape. Wow, where are we now? This local habitat looks completely different from the moorlands we were just in. It's an urban habitat, such as Falkirk Town Centre. Has anyone ever been here? How was it? Urban landscapes are usually densely populated, which means there's lots of people about and are quite built up areas, meaning there's lots of buildings, houses, shops all around the place. But what kind of animals is an urban centre home to? We have a time fox with a big bushy tail. Has anybody ever seen a fox about the town? We have rodents such as rats and hedgehogs. Unfortunately, hedgehogs have decreased in the population over the last 50 years. So if you see one, you are very special. Make sure to look after it by only putting out water and maybe a little bit of wet cat food. Wow, another local habitat. There are so many different habitats in the inner fourth. Does anybody know what habitat this is? It's farmland. You can see this in the fields around Skin Flats. Has anybody ever been here before? How was it? Farmland is land used or suitable for farming. It's got really nutrient rich soil and it's quite flat, which means it's really good for growing different crops on such as oats and wheat and vegetables. Or farming can use livestock and rear animals such as cattle and pigs. But in this picture, the bright yellow flower is called the rapeseed plant. Isn't the colour beautiful? It will cheer you up on any dull day. But what type of animals, and this is wild animals remember, is a farmland home to? We can get worms which are in the ground and these are really good because they mix up all the soil and squiggle about and be able to make the ground really good for growing um, plants in. We have a linnet which is a little bird and a field mouse. Okay, here we are, another local habitat, and this will be the last stop on our journey around the inner forest. Does anybody know what habitat this is? It's the mud flats, such as at Caneo, which is close to Kincardine Bridge. Has anyone ever been here before? How was it? Mud flats are a stretch of muddy land left uncovered at low tide. So when the river forth comes in, you can't see the mud flats, but when the water goes out, you're left with this big bit of squelching mud, which is silts, clay deposits left by the water. You find here lots of wild 
fowl and waders, which are a type of bird that live on the mudflats and coastal habitats. Let's have a closer look to see what type we can find. We have a curlew, which has got a really long beak. That's so it can get deep down into the mud to find all its tasty food. We have a herring gull, a dunlin, lugworms, or a cast of lugworms, which means this is the type of food that the birds like to eat at deep in the mud flats. Mussels. We have oyster catchers. They usually have a bright orange beak and feet. We have a turnstone and a golden eye, which you can tell because look how bright yellow their eye is. Wow, isn't that amazing? All the different types of animals that the mudflats is their home. Wow, what an amazing journey we've just been on around the inner fourth, looking at all the different types of habitats we have on our doorstep. But if we think back, there was some habitats that were home to more animals than others. For example, in Aloha at the Black Devil Wetlands, today we've seen eight different types of animals. But in the urban habitat in Falkirk, we only seen three. Why do you think this might be? It could be because the urban area is quite built up with less wild spaces, whereas the Black Devon wetlands, there's a more natural space for animals to be able to make their homes in. It also has greater access to shelter, food and water, which the built up areas don't have for animals. What can we do about it? We could help animals by providing them with the correct food and water. We could make their homes a better place and have less development on these wild spaces. So we want to conserve the natural spaces that we already have for the animals. There might be some animals that you've seen in these different types of habitats that we didn't see today on our journey. You can pause this video now and ask any question about the different types of habitats or animals um, from around the inner fourth with your teacher and classmates. Next, we're going to map the different types of habitats that we've seen today. As you can see on the screen, this is a map of the inner fourth, similar to the one that we've seen before our journey, except this one has lots of different colours on it. This is called a habitat map. The different colours represent different types of habitats in the inner fourth. Let's take a closer look and follow our journey. Here, we have a key. A key shows you what is on the map. For example, grey is urban. So every patch of grey on the map is an urban area. Or red is industrial. So every patch of red on the map is an industrial area. We can still see the blue in the middle is our river fourth. Let's go round and see what habitats we are mapping on the map. We've got dark green, which is a crossbird and grassland. Next, we have Long Gannet, the industrial site, which is a red. We then went to Aloha with the wetlands, which is the light blue. Up into the Oakle Hills in the Moorland, 
which you can see actually ranges across this, this whole area as light green. We can then come round to the farmland at Skin Flats, which is all of this brown area. The urban, which is the grey, as we found out earlier, with Falkirk. And finally, our last stop is a really pale blue, which is the mud flats, such as at Caneo. This gives us a really good idea of our locations and what locations are what type of habitats. Now we've gone through the presentation, we're going to give you some activities to do as the class. First of all, your teacher will invite you one by one to act out how you would walk through the different types of habitat. Think back to each habitat and imagine that you're there and what it would feel like. What shoes would you wear, if any? Was it difficult to walk through or did you sit for a while or walk quickly? Was it quiet and relaxing or was it exciting and busy? Once you've done this activity, another activity for you to do is just to create habitat through sensory boxes. Your teacher will explain to you and give you the resources that you need. We are going to be, you are, you're going to be making different types of habitats that we've seen today, such as mud flats or farmland, using different household items and recycled materials. That way you'll be able to feel and experience what it'd be like for each of the different types of habitat. And finally, I'm challenging you to get outside and complete two RSPB wild challenges to experience and help nature. I'm asking you to complete Habitat Heaps and Habitat Explorers. For the Habitat Heaps, you will be helping nature by creating a new habitat in your school grounds for animals to enjoy. And once you've done that, explore what habitats are already on your doorstep. Remember, these habitats might be a nest in a tree or to an entire grassland. Don't forget to ask your teacher to mark as complete as this counts towards earning your badge for Wild Challenge. Have fun, hope you enjoy. Bye.